there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and today I'm going to be doing some acrylic painting. I don't usually use acrylic, but I've had some questions and I thought I'd address them on a page that's going to be in my interleaved Bible. So it's a full page painting. And I'm going with Matthew 5, verses 13 and 14. You are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. And the combination of those two was an interesting idea for me. So I did that in the 40 days of prayer and fasting pages, the sketches that I had done. And I created my light bulb, as you see, by using a roll of tape and then letting it taper down into a salt shaker end and made a little mountain down below. There's a sketch in the description down below that you can download and use, but you can also draw it yourself. It's not super hard. And I'm using these paints that I've had in my drawer for years. They are almost gone. They're kind of getting dry and crusty, but I'm hoping to use them up. You can use lots of different types of acrylics. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. They can be like your kid's acrylics. Uh, just don't tell them you're using their acrylics. <laughs> you can uh, play with them in your Bible. If you're using an interleaved Bible like this, it has every other page blank like this. So you have lots of room. And I don't use this Bible much unless I have a big idea. And this one was going to be a big idea. So I thought I'd use this one so I could do a full page. But you can also reduce this down and do it in the margin of a regular Bible. And if you want to use acrylics in your regular Bible, you'll want to use the acrylics really thin. And what I mean by really thin is take a baby wipe after you get the painting done while it's still wet and spread that color around. You can make it thin so that you can actually see the words underneath if you're painting right over your Bible text. Because I know for lots of us that's super important. I'm not going to need to do that here, but I wanted to show you that you can so that you can use these paints in your regular Bible journaling if you wish. I prefer watercolor in general because it's less work to make them transparent, but for some people that's an important thing to be able to use their acrylics if they desire and try to make them transparent. So I'm using an old brush. There's no magic behind this brush. It was probably one that I got at a crafty store at some point. Um, but you want to make sure if you're using any of your good watercolor brushes that you wash them out really well afterward. Don't let any of the paint dry in there or your bristles will start to fall out eventually and you could wreck the whole brush in one fell swoop. You'll want to uh, mix your colors. There's a bunch of different ways to do it, but I'm just going to layer a little bit of this on. I shouldn't have done the blue yet. I should have been working on blending the yellow and the red first, but the joy of acrylics the, the good part about them is that you can just keep painting over something over and over until you get it to work the way you want it to. You really don't have to do like with watercolor and, and, and try to work all of it at the same time. You can just paint right over top of it and fix things. So if you end up getting some of this yellow in your light bulb, you can paint white right over it and recover that area quite quickly. But I'm trying to use my baby wipe while the paint is still wet to do some of the blending. And that baby wipe is just going to moisten the paint a little bit so it blends better and also help to keep it wet because this is not going to work once everything's dry. It's one reason why I said make sure you, <laughs> you kind of do the yellow and the red part first and then work on the, the part down below. So I even added a little bit of paint to it to make it a little more pliable and then trying to blend in a little bit of the blue into the red and just get that color moving around. And if you're going to continue work it, just make sure you keep that baby wipe tapped on everything so that the paint stays wet so you can work it a little bit better. And if you need to wipe paint off and brighten it up, then a new baby wipe will do that quite easily. Notice that I painted right over top of part of that salt shaker bit because I knew I was going to be able to recover that portion. So I wasn't stressed out about my brush kind of, you know, getting messy right over top of it. And I'm just going to finish off getting my background the way I want it. You're never going to get acrylic to be perfect with uh, my kind of technique. There's, there are ways to get the blending better, but I wanted more of this kind of artistic look rather than trying to make everything look 100% perfect. So I took a color called night, which is kind of a purplish color, and mixed it with white to paint back in the salt shaker top. Because I wanted this to look like metal a little bit, because it's going to be a metal salt shaker head. 
and I wanted it to have a little bit of color to it. So I'm varying the amount of that purple that I put in it so it looks a little bit different than the part above it because the part above it is going to be glass. And I'm not worrying too much about trying to make shapes in here. I just wanted to have a little bit of a couple different colors and let it be kind of sketchy so that it just starts to look like it could be metal. While I had all that color on my brush, I decided to put a little color in my salt. Even though a pile of salt doesn't seem like it would have color in it, if I paint a little bit of that purple and then go over it with some light white and just leave a little tiny bit of that purplish color down there in the bottom, it's going to give the salt pile a little bit of dimension and a little bit of interest so it's not just a big white blob. Although that would be a great place to do some journaling if you wanted to, but I'm not going to journal on this page a whole lot because I have all this beautiful paint on here, so it's kind of cool. So see how, how nice and light it came out, but, um, but also has some dimension in there. Next up is going to be what I'm going to do in the center. And what I wanted to put in the middle here is a heart. And you can put all different kinds of things in the middle of yours, but I thought a heart would, would be a good significant image because he's, God is saying, be the salt and the light show my heart to the world, be my my hands and feet in the world to others. So I thought that would be a, a good image to put in here. In the Bible Journaling Made Simple book, there's another example of putting a city inside that and the word shine across the little filaments. And you can see that on page, I think it's 116 in Bible Journaling Made Simple. And there's, of course, links to the book in the description down below if you still have not picked it up and you would like to because it's full of great ideas. For the center though, what I wanted to show you, I'm, I'm kind of deliberately doing a messy thing because I wanted to show you how well you can go over things with your acrylics, which is I, I have this heart in the middle and I wanted a kind of darkish blue around it and then glowing out to white around the outside edges. But I had gone really too dark in the center and then the heart is kind of a mess in there and I'm going to have to paint around it. So with acrylics, you can paint right over top of what's already there if you didn't like it. You can paint it out and begin again completely. Now, when you do that, you end up with a lot of thick paint. And I don't like thick paint in my Bible. I want my page to feel as much like a Bible page as it can, keep it as thin as possible. So I ended up just wiping off some of that, but you can just keep painting layers on it. And I'm just kind of trying to remove paint underneath and then paint over with the colors that I am happy with. So I'm a little happier with this lighter blue rather than that heavy blue that I went in there with but it's really easy to recover. I'm using a tissue to add on a little bit of the salt coming down from the shaker onto the pile. You can use anything that has a texture in it, a little bit of sponge, a little anything with a, a little kind of raggedy texture on the end of it to create some of the salt. And then I wanted to add detail as my my part on top is starting to dry. It's still not completely dry, so it's perfectly fine to go in while it's wet. And I'm using my watercolor brush, which I will wash out really well because I don't want to mess it up, to add some dots for the end of the salt shaker. I just put two quick little lines to make it look like a shaker. And then there's the filaments. And the filaments, there's you know usually a couple of them. They come up to the top, and then there's something that goes across in between them. And that's where you can put in whatever you want to put in. Like in the book, you can put a city in there because a city on a hill goes really well with that. But to keep it simple, because I try to do things more on the simple side here on this channel for everybody who is not all that keen about drawing a lot of things. And a heart is going to be a lot simpler to put in here. So I'm going to paint my heart back in now. And I can paint it in and add filaments to connect it. So I can just take some of the, the blue color and make filaments that will hold that heart up in the middle of my, my little light bulb. And that is just about it. I can add a little bit of highlight since I have some white paint left on my, um, my palette. I can add a highlight onto the heart itself. I can paint in a little bit more um, salt. Uh, lots of different little details that you can add any way that you wish. But the outside part is dry enough now that I can add some gel pen writing on there. You are 
the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world and add that just in the, the background area. The page is mostly flat, as you can kind of see. It's a little bit cr crunchy curly, but it's not as bad as what you might get if you were doing watercolor. A lot of people stress out about watercolor making their paper warbly, but you will get some of that with this, even if you end up using your gesso on it. And I didn't use any gesso on this. I just kind of went for it. But I'm gonna do a really quick ironing and I want to show you what will happen if you're not careful. The thicker paint in a couple of the areas transferred over, and if you iron it too long, that will stick entirely, and you will have trouble getting your other paper off of it. So iron really lightly, just for a quick second. Don't let the iron linger, because you don't want to melt that acrylic paint. All right, I hope this was helpful, and that you will go and paint something beautiful in your Bible. There's a sketch in the doobly-doo down below. Be sure to join us on Facebook. We'd love to see your work there as well, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.